Right, dear brothers and sisters, welcome back, inshallah. Uh, we've, got, we've, got, we've got one more slide to cover, inshallah. Then we'll go on because of time. Otherwise, we've got more slides, but we have more time to cover all of them. We'll go on to, inshallah, a demonstration of a role play, and then we're going to practice role plays. Uh, and as it says on your uh, program schedule, there are two levels of role play. The first level of role play is the questions and answers are all written down on the sheets. So you pair up, one person pretends that they're a Christian or Jewish, whatever person, yeah? And the other person is giving a dawah in da'i, and you follow a system through. There are three, sorry, there are three, there isn't Jewish specifically. There is Christian, dawah to a Christian, dawah to an atheist, and general dawah to any person, okay? They don't follow any religion, maybe Buddhist or whatever. Okay? So you follow that system through, inshallah. Once you've had a go with that, learned your experience, inshallah. Then we'll go on to level two role play, where you, we we'll give you sheets, inshallah, where you, uh, again, one of you is a Dai, the other one is just a, a, a non Muslim, whichever, and you pick and choose the answers, okay? Um, you just do your own pick and mix. Woolworths is closed down now, but you have to do your own pick and mix. <laughs> Right. Uh, one more slide to go through, and that is the proof. This is, we've been going through for quite a long time. What is the proof that God exists? And these are the four proofs that I use. Okay. Number one is called the principle of cause and effect. You say to the person, I can prove to you God exists, because number one, it's called causality. Sorry, complicated names, but also called the cosmological argument. Forget the names. All it means is that everything must have a cause. Does that make sense? Everything must have a creator. Everything must have a cause, that's what they say. And the ultimate cause of everything is God. Ultimate cause of it, ultimate creator of everything is God. Okay. Now, when you say that, what is the atheist going to say? Nature. 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 When you say God made everything, what, are they going to, what else could they say? Who made God? Who made God? They'll say nature, or they say, who made God? This is where you have to answer properly. This is the difficult word. Okay. Oh my God, it's very easy. Uh, there's a long thing, but I don't want to go through the long thing. I'll keep brief, inshallah. Who made God? Look, the point is, the universe, is it infinite or finite? Does it go on forever? Or is it fixed? Sorry, is it go on forever or is it limited? Limited. Limited. Everyone, all scientists say the universe is finite. It doesn't go on forever. Okay. Now, the laws of physics... Uh, did, when the Big Bang happened, you know the Big Bang all together in the Big Bang happened? Did it only matter that started or the laws of physics started as well? What do they believe? Do you know what scientists say? They say the laws of physics started with the Big Bang. There was no laws of physics before. Now, space and time, are they fixed or are they changeable? Change. They're changeable. Space and time are linked together. The fast, you, get, you all agree? The faster you travel in space, the Einstein's theory of relativity. Sorry if it's complicated. I remember I said this one day, and brothers are laughing, we'll come from this. Oh my god, it's complicated. But no, I'll keep it simple. All we're saying is, keep it very simple. All we're saying is, space and time are connected and are relative. Do you follow? It's not, not, not like all the time fixed. God, is he inside the universe or is he outside the universe? He's outside the universe. The atheist would say, uh, he says he doesn't know. You tell him he's outside the universe because if he was inside, we could detect him maybe. Maybe. He's outside the universe. And we know from the Quran that he's above his throne. Allah uh, Ashtawa, yes? Now, if God is outside the universe, he's outside space and he's outside time. If he's outside time, that means who made him? No one. No one needs to make him because he exists in time. You follow? And the atheists accept this. If God is outside the universe, they say, how do you go outside the universe? Mm -hmm. If he's inside the universe, we can detect him, maybe. Maybe. Okay. 
Okay, it's outside the universe. It must be outside the universe. And the Quran says this. You could say the Quran says this. Okay? And if he's outside space and time, then he doesn't need a maker. And also we know from we can give more evidence from the Quran that in the Quran Allah Quran tells us that um, Allah swears by time and there's other indirect evidence in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. So no more details now. Okay? But uh, God is outside space and time. He's out, look, he's definitely outside his creation. We agree on that? Right. If he's outside his creation, then he's outside space and time. And they accept that. Number one. Number two, the design and precision of the universe is called a teleological argument. Name doesn't matter. Basic point here is that the universe is so complicated, there must be somebody who designed it. Yes? This is the Arunyaya stuff. Go to Harun you can learn it, and you must know it anyway. It's obvious. Look how complicated the universe is. There must be somebody who's designed it. The way the atheists will trap you on this argument is, they will say, if you're saying the universe is complicated, and therefore it needs a maker, God must be more complicated or less complicated? More complicated. Therefore, he needs somebody else to make him. That's what they'll say. But, we've already told him he's outside the creation. Okay, are you happy with that? Okay. You can give two I mean, we can give an example from Imam Abu Hanifa. Okay, may Allah be pleased with him. Uh, where he says about the boat and how the yeah. boat can form. Yep, you know that we all have you all heard of it? Which means there must be somebody who made it. Basically you say somebody must have made it. Uh, the universe. Okay. Here, we can I take example from Sir Isaac Newton, because it's useful for non-Muslims. I'll tell you very quickly in challenge because we're gonna we don't use up too much time. We want to go on to the uh, role plays. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton had a debate with this is a useful example, it's in your folder, but the example isn't just the name is. So I won't tell you now because you can tell. This is a simple example you give them. Sir Isaac Newton agreed to have a debate with an atheist. You've heard of Sir Isaac Newton? One of the greatest English scientists, British scientists. Yeah. Okay. He agreed to have a debate with an atheist. He was strong, he's actually a Christian, but he's like a very strong monotheist. So he's not really a Christian, although he says he's from Christian monotheist. Country. But anyway. Uh, and he agreed to have a debate with an atheist. He called the atheist to his house. He started making some food. The atheist was in his room. And there was a, a model of the solar system. Okay, you know, the sun and the earth going round and uh, all the planets going round and the little moon going round the earth. Little model, clockwork model. Okay. And uh, the atheist said to Sir Isaac Newton, he said, who made this model of the solar system? And Isaac Newton said, this came. Uh, the atheist said, it's not possible. It's so complicated. It's just so clever. So Isaac Newton said to him, if you can't accept that a model of the solar system came from nowhere, how can you accept that the real solar system came from nowhere? Okay, and as far as I know, he sort of accepted it, started believing in God. The point is, just a model of the solar system is so clever and so complicated, how can the real solar system be by chance? See the point? Okay, anyway, that's an example here. Okay. Professor Paul Davies, the Templeton Prize. Professor Paul Davies was a professor of... The, sorry about this, it's getting a bit heavy and complicated, but... Some of you can remember it, some of you maybe can't. But anyway, he got a prize for the biggest contribution to belief. What he said was, he's not a, he's not a believer, in, he's not a follower of any religion. He's not a Christian or any religion. What he said was, the laws of the universe are so systematic and the fact that you can discover them means somebody must have designed it. He showed mathematically. You follow, for example, E equals MC squared, light travels a straight line, gravity, the force of gravity. These are so uh, easy for us to formulate, that means that somebody has designed them so that we can understand them. Does that make sense? Otherwise, they could be totally random. You know, it could be E equals M plus Z plus Y plus Z. <laughs> you never work it out. Okay? But the fact, and he showed this mathematically, he showed it, logically, mathematically. So he got a price for this, and that's a powerful argument that there is a creator. Okay, number three. These two, the Christians you can use, and they do use these arguments. Only the Muslims can use these two arguments. So you use all four of them. Because I've, I've gone to the Christian website and checked how you prove God exists. It's not really easy. Okay? So we can use these two examples as well. I'm going to that. We can use all four. And the third one is the prophets, their lives, and importantly, consistency of the message. Moses, Abraham, Noah, David, Solomon, Joseph, Jacob, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, they all tell the same thing. Which, how do they say the same thing? They talk about six beliefs of a Muslim. They didn't talk about five pieces of Islam. They talk about six beliefs. It's the belief that makes you a Muslim. Okay? But their Sharia was different, of course. 
You, know, you may, may not pray five times a day, but they pray four or six times a day. <coughs> but the consistency of message is okay. And this points to a, and also their lives. The, what are you trying to say here? What are you trying to say? You're trying to say, look, there were certain human beings in history. Tell the atheists, there are certain human beings in history who had really, really good lives. Okay? You say to them, have you not met someone like that, a really good person? They say, yeah, do you, do you know someone like that? A really good person? Yeah. Oh, you like a good bloke, mate, you know? Right? Okay. So, this, these were, that's what these people liked. Okay? And they stood up for the truth, and their message was the same, and they were persecuted for their message, and, very importantly, they had no material gain. They didn't have comfortable lives, enjoy themselves. They were persecuted, tortured, killed, and their followers. How can they do this? Were they mad? Well, if they were mad, how can they <coughs> came with a message which was the same? How can it made sense? It was logical if they were mad. If they weren't mad, why were they doing it? You follow me? This is a powerful argument for there being God. Number four, the miracles given to these people. And the ultimate proof is the Quran. And if you add these together, atheists have to agree, especially this one, the Quran, they have to agree it is an amazing book. And if you go through why the Quran is a miracle, you say to them, isn't it an amazing book? And they say, yeah, it is true, it is an amazing book. They add it all together. It all, the, after you say a few, scientists will say, oh, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, he wasn't changed, or well, it doesn't mean anything. The challenge doesn't mean anything. 1.6 billion followers doesn't mean much. Uh, it's a fast growing religion, doesn't mean much. Come on, this is all adding up, it's stacking up. The evidence. When you add it all together, does it prove that they it came from God? <coughs> They're thinking. So as the brother says, you give the brother you say, you give the questions and you give the answers. What will you say to them? After you say all of this, what are they going to say to you? The cameraman in my last talk, last present no, sorry, last, presentation, last time in Liverpool, in Liverpool, <coughs> the cameraman I called him over, he was like an atheist. Well, sorry, he wasn't atheist, he was Buddhist, but he wasn't sure about the Quran being a miracle. I went through this, and he said, okay, it is an amazing book. He agreed. I said to him, at that point, what do you say to them? Remember, the sheep trying to run away? You have to, what, were they, what are they going to think when you show all these miracles? When you show these miracles, what is the atheist going to say? Or think, at least. Where could the, where could the Quran come from? Either it's from God, or... No, not with all these miracles. None of them probably. Or magic. Magic. Magic, yes. Which you mean where does magic come from? Really? The devil. The thinking came from the devil. The thinking Quran came from the you tell them this. Tell them, after I've shown all the evidence, there's two possibilities. If they agree it's from God, no problem. I'm not sure it's from God. Okay. There are two possibilities. Either it's from God or or the Satan. You tell them straight, you don't hide it, yeah? Because you've got to show them. Then you can tell them why it's coming from Satan. Are you happy to show, you're, you're comfortable with that? You show them something from Satan because number one, when you recite the Quran, you say, you ask Allah to protect you from the devil. That's not strong evidence, but some evidence. Secondly, what has this religion produced? Good people who fast, who pray to God, who don't lie, who don't cheat, who don't murder, who are honest, who are decent, close families. Is this from the devil? Allah in the Quran. There is no crookedness in the Quran. There's nothing bad in the Quran. It's true. You see what I mean? So that means it can't be from the devil. And the guy, the film cameraman last time, I said to him, there's three possibilities. There's two possibilities. From God or the devil. Do you know what he said to me? There's three possibilities. <laughs> you remember all the audience? In Liverpool, he said, no, there's three possibilities. I said, what is that? It could be from science. Then I said, it can't be from science because this, all of this evidence can't prove. He said, oh, I agree, it's not from science. Okay, I, as a brother, one brother said, I think your brother said, that maybe Prophet Muhammad could, at a real stretch, got some facts right, but he couldn't have got it 100% right, and he must have made some mistakes, but there are no mistakes in the Quran. Okay, then he agreed, okay, fine, it's not from science. Then we left with two arguments. It's from the Quran, or from God and the devil. And he can't be devil, I gave his reasons, and he said, okay, it's not from the devil. Because therefore, he said it's from God then. He said, okay, it's from God. So why did you become Muslim? <laughs> He's stuck. He's trapped here. Yeah. Yes, are you sure it's from God? Yes, it is. Why did you don't say I don't have to think about it. You're sure the Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet? I'm not sure. But the Quran says that he's a prophet. Okay, then he's a prophet. You see, you've got the evidence now. Once you've got the Quran, you can demolish everything. Once you've got the Quran as a miracle, the Quran says that. Okay, fine, I accept that. The Quran says the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet. Okay, I accept that. You see? 
then you, once you've got the evidence, which is the Quran, then you can, everything else can just be demolished. And that's what you do with atheists. Right. Um, Right, what we're going to do next is, so there's a question here, sister's asked, I'll better just cover this inshallah. Uh, sister says, how do we tackle questions from atheists from the evolutionary point of view, or viewpoint? The books by Harun Yahya are full of excellent arguments, but you need to have a scientific background to successfully debate these issues. I would say, sister, it's this. With atheists, you need to prove that God exists, and it comes back down to the Quran. Okay, uh, I hope that hopefully answers the question. And you need to prove to them that God exists. And that's what I would say, because uh, other things really are not that important until and unless they accept that there is a God. Does that answer the question, Sister? Or do you want to add any more to it? Um, I was thinking specifically, <coughs> they know the arguments uh, that support atheists. Yeah. Um, they supposedly support the evolutionary theory, so the uh, trying the bites. Yes, okay, that's fine, but again, you need to prove there is a God to them. So you follow this through and say, look, this proves, including the Quran, proves that it's from God, and if it proves from God, then the Prophet Muhammad says, and that's what I say to them. I, a very important thing to them is, look, the Quran proves that it's from God. The Quran proves that the Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet of God. The Quran proves that Islam is true. These are the three things. This is what the Quran proves, really. Once you prove the Quran is true, and they can't deny it, then it proves everything else. Does that answer, hopefully that answer your question, sister? You've got to go back to this. I mean, yeah, that's true. If you just go to evolution or uh, or whatever, yeah, you're going to have clever arguments. But this is why, again, you say to them, look, this is not important. The existence of God is important. Yeah? Okay, we'll stop there, inshallah. But in Dawah's situation, in Dawah's situation, obviously, it takes time, and maybe half an hour, an hour, or whatever. Okay? Um, there's one other story I want you to relate to, but I, I don't think there's not time now, so we'll go on the wrong place. If there's time, then I'll give another story of how a lesbian lady who was a Muslim, who became a Christian, then became a lesbian, after three and a half hours, she shared the Shahada, alhamdulillah, at the Dahawa table, and then she was, her friend was there with her, and she tried to me and said to be a Muslim as well. So it takes time sometimes. That's what I'm trying to say, it takes time. I remember this because it's three and a half hours, it's a long time. You know, sometimes it does. But usually it's less. But um, we're going to go through some idea. You've seen the basic idea uh, of what um, the system you need to follow. So that's what we're going to follow this, this brother. And he's going to pretend he's a Christian, yeah? So then, presumably. You're a Christian, of course, yes, that's right. So either, now with the, with the role plays, either you can say, for example, when the brother was giving da, brother or sister is giving da'wah, either you can say, for example, do you believe Jesus is God or Son of God? And you can say, I believe he's God, or I believe he's Son of God, whatever. Okay, you can say that. Uh, however, if you're uncomfortable to say, it's only a practice, but if you're still uncomfortable to say it, then just say, he says it, or the Christian says it. Right, right. we're going to introduce the brother because you need to know his background. Oh, he'll introduce himself. Uh, your age, what do you do, whatever. My, my no, 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 no. In the Dow Road. Just imagine there's a guy here called John, yeah? You can't see him and he can't speak, so I'm speaking for him, yeah? No. His name is John, he's an IT man. And he's how old? 30. <laughs> now, the other thing is, you can give him questions, or you can, he can, you know, like, uh, I don't know, you have some quizzes, don't you, where they get help? So he can get some help from you. Okay. Uh, sisters, you can hear alright? Yeah. I'm gonna, Sorry, you can't see properly, but uh, you can't put it on camera. No, it's not. No, no, no. Okay. So, uh, right. So the situation. Let's have a situation where we've stopped this person. Okay, I'm going to use a leaflet. I'm going to use the leaflet. I'm going to stop this person. We have leaflets which say "Purpose of Life" on there. Okay, so I'm going to use the stop person. He's walking past. Okay. Um, sorry. Do you want to see this in a situation? A work? Do you want to do a work situation or in the street? What, and what would you use? You choose. Brothers have you they choose. Well, and then you can be that sort of person. Yeah. So, uh, do you want any suggestions? What workplace? What workplace? Workplace. Okay. Let's pick workplace. Workplace. You, I'm working with him. Yeah. It's a bit more difficult. Okay. Fine. Working with him. Right. Alright. So working with John. Okay. And uh, how do I give him dawa? Okay. Fine. I've done this before. But having said that, my nurse has become Muslim, alhamdulillah. My receptionist has become Muslim, alhamdulillah. And a few of my patients have become Muslim, alhamdulillah. Uh, alhamdulillah. But uh, 
haven't even left for my lab. But, uh, what, choice, have, what choice have they got when they've got their mouth open and you're talking to them? <laughs> well, they're the <laughs> But the thing is, being ladies, they often got the mouth open. Well, I mean, you know, talking about, but I mean, you know, carry on. Um, right. Um, so, okay, we won't be there. But I'm going to say to him, um, okay, let's stick to here, Christian. Keep it simple. What I'm going to say to you, uh, John, um, jo John, one of the things is that, uh, as a Muslim, I should really tell you a little bit about Islam. Like, we've been working together for a while. Uh, is it okay if I tell you a bit about Islam? Yeah, sure. Okay, fine. Brilliant. Okay, we we'll go. You chose a nice time and place. Okay, he's quiet, at work, whatever. Okay. What else, John? Is John? Uh, do you have any beliefs yourself, John? Do you believe in a God? John. Uh, John doesn't really have a belief. No. John, have belief. John is just likes his weekends off and just you know he doesn't really care about religion. Aren't you a, uh, okay? Do you are you do you have a Christian? Your family background is Christian, John. Yes, John. Say John. As in someone else. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. John, um, uh, he was brought up as a as a Christian. Okay. Um, but uh, since he left house, he doesn't really follow Christianity. So you don't follow Christianity. That's fine, John. But your beliefs, you still believe about Jesus and so on. I don't know. There may be something. You know, he says there may be something out there. Okay, fine, John. So your family are they Christians? Um, nobody really practices in John's family. No. Okay. This is very normal. That people inside don't practice it. But what you still need to do is to remove this false god because at the end of the day, that's what they'll fall back on. If they go to prison, when it comes to ticking boxes, oh, not anything, they'll say. Oh, shall, they'll say, shall I put down Church of England? And they go, yeah, see you, be mate. That you see. Hospital, what, uh, what's your next of kin? Uh, what's your religion? I don't have religion. Shall I put CUV? They go, yeah, see you, be. You see, when it comes to ticking boxes, they'll put CUV as Christian. Okay. So, so, so therefore, I still assume he's a Christian. He said, the background is Christianity, I assume he's a Christian. <coughs> Sorry about this. <coughs> John, you know, so your background is Christianity, John. Yeah? Your background, your parents were Christian. They don't practice it, but your background is Christianity, is that right? That's right, John. Okay. Okay, man, John. Okay, um, so do you believe there is a creator, John? Look, there must be a creator. Look at the universe. Look how complicated it is, how clever they designed it. Surely there must be something that's made all of this. Yeah, I mean, uh, John thinks that they, they, there is something out there, but there's so many religions saying very similar things. Right. And, okay. and um, you know, everyone is more or less pointing towards the same goal. Right. And they've got different paths okay. of going to that goal. Right. And whether... Uh, John thinks that you can choose from either one of those paths, right? And um, you, you doesn't matter you, exactly, and you eventually end up in the same place, right? The question is, John, uh, you said you do believe there's probably something up there, probably something more than this. Is that right, John? That's what John thinks. Yeah. Okay, right, John. Well, the Quran tells us, John. You heard the Quran is the Muslim book. The Quran tells us that God is like this. He knows everything. He sees everything. He hears everything. He's absolutely all powerful. He has no beginning. He has no end. Would you agree with that about the Creator? So say that again. That this Creator, okay, yeah. who has made the universe, He knows everything. He hears everything. He sees everything. He's absolutely all powerful. Would you agree with that about the Creator? Yes, John. You agree that. You agree that this is the Creator. Yeah. Okay. Now, if this Creator exists, as you said, and He's like this, um, do you think He's made it for a purpose? Yeah. He's made it for a purpose. Do you know what the purpose is? The purpose is to be good to everyone and, you know, just uh, look after yourself. Don't be, don't, as long as you're not bad to anyone else, okay. you're good to everyone else and, you know, you're polite. That's what John thinks is, is a good enough purpose. Okay. Well, the thing is, John, what you're saying, okay, is just like your own idea. Is that right? It's your own guesswork or your own idea. Yeah. I mean, just what I've seen in my yeah. life. Yes. You know, it makes sense. Um, that, I mean, that, that's, what, that's what John thinks here. Yeah. Okay, the thing is, John, to ask this question about why he made us, Almighty God has sent many human beings as prophets. Have you must have heard of some of them, like Jesus and Moses and Abraham and Muhammad. Have you heard of these people? Yeah. Right. These people were sent by God with good news and a warning. Do you know what the good news is? Good news is about God. No, it's much more than that. The good news is, yes, firstly there is a God, they said, and they said 
that if you follow me, right, you, your life on this earth is going to be successful, it's going to be happier. Okay, I'm sure your life is already happy, John, right? You said that you're already happy with the way you are. Right? But it's going to be even happier, right? And you will fulfill the purpose for which God made us. Do you know what the purpose is for which you, this Creator made us? You said you're not sure. Yeah? No, John said that you know the purpose is to be. You know, yes, no, there's more than that. To to be good to your, right, you know, people around you. Right, the Creator has made us for something else, John. Okay, much more than this. Being good is part of it, but that's not the whole answer. The whole answer, really, John, is here. Firstly, in the Quran, we're told that every single prophet came with the same message, and firstly, this Creator has made us to worship Him. Now, as soon as you say that, brothers. They're going to think, oh my God, this is like an ego trip. People have said to me, it's an ego trip. So you ha I have to cover that. I have to counter that. Now, so I'm, that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, right, John, uh, it's, uh, he has made us to worship him. And you're thinking, wow, it's like an ego trip for God. Everyone should worship me. I'm so great. If God was a man, yes, it would be an ego trip, right? Because God is like this. He has no beginning, he has no end. He's absolutely all-powerful and almighty and all-seeing. He's not man, he's not a woman. Then it's, it can't be an ego trip, ego trip because he controls everything. Does that make sense? Okay, then, then, okay, then you can the <coughs> purpose? purpose. Right. Number one, he has created us to worship him. Right? That's his creation. But on the earth, we're really on the earth for two reasons. Okay, you, you, I assume you don't know what the reasons are. I'll, I'll give it, well, John's given you his reasons. Yes, okay, yeah, right. okay, right. The thing is, John, now a lot of Muslims don't actually know the two reasons, I think. I'll tell you what they are. And these two reasons are given by Ibn Qaim al Josiah, who says these reasons. Number one, we all know that God is testing us. Okay. The second one, and uh, Ibn Qaim al Josiah says in his book this, when I read it, I was quite surprised. And most Muslims don't actually realize this. And that is, now, go back to John. John, there are two reasons. So I'm giving the background voice, the brother's making it up. Okay, it's Ibn Sheikh al Sheikh Sam Ibn Khaim al Jawziya here. Right, uh, there are two reasons. Number one, he we'll places on the earth, John, to test us. God is testing us. Are we going to do good things or bad things? God is testing us. Everything can be a test or a punishment in this Creator. The important point is, John, this Creator loves you very much. Okay. He loves you and he has placed you on the earth to test you and also so that you can become good enough to be able to see him. I'll give you an example of that. John, at the moment, if you look at the sun, what would happen? You can't look at it for too long, can you? You go blind. Yeah. Agreed? Now imagine, John, trying to look at the light of Almighty God. Can you look at the light of Almighty God? If the sun, which he has created, you can't look at without going blind. There are stars in the universe which are a hundred million times brighter than the sun. So we can't even look at those stars. Mm. Make sense? If the Creator has made this all, and you agree at the beginning that He has made all of this, then imagine His light would be incredibly bright. Yeah. True? Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore, He has placed us on the earth so that we become good enough to be able to see Him. And this is what uh, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Qayyim al Jazir says that uh, because he gives evidence from the Quran that they seek, they do good deeds seeking the face of Allah. That's the Quran. Okay, they do deeds seeking the face of Allah. Okay, so seeking the face of Allah. Seeking the face of Allah. Okay, this is in the Quran, verse of the Quran. So this is the point. So therefore, uh, uh, John, that we're on the earth to become good enough to be able to see, after the day of judgment that we can see Almighty God. Okay, then and still be alive, still survive. Okay, that's why he has placed us on the earth. And that's what we're going through. Now, if we fulfill that, John, okay, then you're going to be, then your life is going to be happier because you're, you've got a connection. I don't See, John said, why, uh, why does God need to do that? Why does God need he, us? He, to he doesn't need us. The thing is, John, God has got billions and billions and countless numbers of angels and other creatures that are worshipping him. He has made us, we are his special creation. There's another form of creation called jinn spirits, and they have a choice and we have a choice. We can worship God or we can reject God. Okay? If you worship Him, if we worship Him, our life is going to be successful. Right? It's like, as I, okay, 
Uh, as I said, we talk. Um, it's like having a connection, like having a broadband connection with the Creator. Can you believe there's a God, you say? Yeah. Do you worship, do you pray to him at all? Well, John, uh, you know, does it in his own way. Okay, John, well, you, you do worship God. Well, well, John says that even while he's sitting down, if he just thinks for a minute, that's worship. Okay, that's If fine. he's washing his car and he's pulling this for a second, that's worship. Right. If he does whatever, that's worship. So you do worship God. Works. In that way, yeah. You do, you do. So therefore you would like to worship God. You yes. do it, so yeah. Right. But I mean, I mean, John says that that's his form of worship, yeah, yeah. and he doesn't want to be dictated on how to do that. Fine. That's not a problem, John. But the thing is, John, you agree with this concept of God as I've gone through? Yes. Okay. Now, there is only one religion which says that God is like this. Do you know which religion that is? Christianity says that. No, it doesn't. Christianity says that Jesus is God. What about the Jews? The Jews have something similar, but the Jews' belief is that they are the chosen people, only though they go to heaven. So you, as a, just a, you're a theist, he's a theist, because he believes in God, can follow religion. As a theist, according to the Jewish religion, you wouldn't go to heaven, because only Jews go to heaven. They're the chosen people. What about people. the Hindus? The Hindus have a monkey god, elephant god, cow god. Would you agree with that? But even they say that there is one in the end, isn't it? They all, they all like That's the fine. miniatures of, of the one. That's fine, but the point here is, um, John, that yes, in some bits they do say there is a creator, but what I'm trying to show you, John, is that this creator has sent many prophets, Abraham, Moses, Noah, David, Solomon, Joseph, Jacob, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. What they said is what I'm telling you. There is one God. If you worship him and you have a relationship with him, uh, like you... You, you put your total trust in him, your total love is for him, and you, etc. You have a connection with him, you are going to be successful. So now, the thing is, the important thing is, John, you do believe in the Creator. You do pray in your own way. Okay, Basically, you're a good man, is that right? Yes, I don't think so. Brilliant. Okay, right, John. So what I'm saying to you, John, is if you... Now, uh, I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to... Like, okay, it may take longer, normally, but here I'm going to try and... Five minutes more, inshallah, okay. What I'm going to say to you, uh, John, is uh, there are two sentences. Try to cut it, I mean, it normally take longer, but cut it short, John. There are two sentences that we say, which we regard as really, really important. These sentences are, John, number one, I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Almighty God. Do you agree with that? Only He should be worshipped? Yes. Do you agree with that statement? Okay. Are you happy to repeat those words? Because if you repeat those words, you're a pure monotheist. You're a worshipper of one God, according to the Quran. And if you say that, there's a chance that you may be saved, the Quran says. Are you happy to say those words? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll, do you want to agree with that? With that? Yes, of course, I agree. I agree with There's no conflict there anyway. Brilliant. So, John, you already believe in this. There's no purpose of repeating that because I've confirmed it right from the start. Okay, fine. So, you do agree that only God should be worshipped? Yeah. Okay. It's good to say these words because it's like confirming it. That's what the Quran says. So if you, you agree that there's nothing... You keep on referring to your book. Yes. But John doesn't think of it as the Quran or no. the Bible. Or no, anything. that's true. John thinks that there is one God and that's right. it. That's it. Okay. But there, it can be represented in right. different books in different right. ways. Okay. Right. The proof of all of this, John, is the Quran. So you need to go through the miracle. Why the Quran's miracle? Right? Let's assume we've gone through... I've gone through the miracles with you, John. What makes your book stand out amongst the rest? Right. The reason it stands out... John, is because of these reasons. It's a miraculous book. As I've just been through, let's assume it's been through, it'll take time. These are the ten reasons why the Quran is a miracle. Can you see, John, after I've been through this, that the Quran is an amazing book? I've been through all the evidence. Yeah, it's an amazing book, but... Can you have come, after showing this evidence, can you not see that it must be a miraculous book, that it must have come from God, or the devil? It's agreeable. You agree with it? Yes. Okay. Now, can you agree that it's only from God, or do you think it might still be from the devil as well? It's, it is from God, from God, yeah. You agree it's from God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's from no, God, yeah. John, then you have to accept that whatever it says is true. But John says he's thinking about it. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine, John. No, John. He's thinking about it. Think it. John will agree with everything you say. No, he won't. No, no, yes, no. Yes. To some extent, even if he agrees. But John is so Arabic that in the end, he still turn around and say, I'll think about it. No, that's fine. No problem, John. Because I've seen John. <laughs> I've discussed this with John. Okay, fine, okay. Listen, John, that's fine. That's not an issue, John. You have to think about it. But what I'm saying to you is, you do agree that God alone, the Creator alone, should be worshipped. Okay. As I said to you, there are two sentences. You've agreed the Quran is 
from, um, you've agreed upon it's a miraculous book, and it's from God. Right? Now, if it's from God as you agree, then surely we need to accept the Quran says that the Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet of God. So how can you deny that? If you've agreed the Quran is from God, and it's the words of God, yeah, if it's from God, it's the words of God, then you have to accept what it says. You can't say it's from God, but I'm going to accept it, because then you'll be in trouble on the day of judgment. Does that make sense? Yeah, but it's easy. Okay, for John, no. this is a bit too much. Okay, it is too much for you, John. Not a problem at all, John. But you've, you've agreed the Quran. Let's just see what we've achieved so far. You've agreed there's one God, which you already believed in. Because he doesn't like, he gets a bit annoyed, so we have to say this. So you agree there is a God, John. You've said that from the beginning. Yes. Now, because a lot of people, when you say things about Islam to them, I always believe it anyway. I always knew the Quran was from God anyway. They say this. Yeah, you're right. I know. I knew you knew that anyway. You have to say that to them. To, otherwise, they feel as if you've converted them or something, and they don't want that. I already believe it anyway. So you've already believed, John, probably, that there is one God. You've already believed that uh, he alone should be worshipped. Is that right, John? You've already believed, you probably already believe the Quran is from God anyway. But I mean, John believes, uh, and even That's he fine. said that the, uh, God doesn't need to be worshipped. He doesn't. He doesn't need people to no, worship him. He doesn't. Him. So if John doesn't worship him, he shouldn't really make a difference. It doesn't make a difference to God, God, what John, John thinks. but it makes a difference to you, John. Your life is going to be better. Are you, is your life happy? John's life is happy. Yeah. Do you want that to be happier? Yeah. Okay. In the Quran, God says, only in the remembrance of Allah. Do hearts find peace and happiness, <coughs> tranquility. So if you remember God. Yeah. There's similar things like that in the Bible, though. Um, yes, because the Bible is a collection of books that have also come from God. But over the years, it got changed, so God sent another book. We're not saying the Bible is not from God. We're saying the Bible is parts of the Bible are originally from God, and the Quran, if you like, is the last chapter of the Bible. If the Bible is a collection of books from God, then the Quran is the last chapter of the Bible. That make sense? Mm. Okay, so I think uh, you should you, you should accept the Prophet Muhammad as a messenger. Would you accept that he's a messenger of God? Possibly. Okay. Okay. Well, is there any reason why you can't accept he's a messenger of God? I mean, this is all really new to me, so you know. Okay. To John but Islam. yeah, but John, but uh, really, John, I think you're very, very close to Islam. Think about it. But clearly, you do believe this one God. You believe that He alone should be worshipped. You do believe the Quran is the um, the is from God. Words of God. You agree, possibly, that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, but the Quran says he is, so you must accept that he is. And then you're very close to Islam, really. I think it's, yeah, concluded there. Got to the same stage. Yeah, anything else you want to That's it. Um, so, you see, the thing is, most Johns are very Arabic. <laughs> it's fine, it takes time. It takes time so, so, most Johns, you, know, you, you explain everything to them. Yes. But even Give then, time. even then, they'll turn around and say, "Look, you know, you know, okay, you got a good point, Sadly, Yeah, let me go. <laughs> yeah, fine, no problem at all. What I'm saying, you have to accept it straight away, John. Take See, time. That's the problem. That's, that's what? I mean, that's what happens a lot of the time. No, then you, in that case, you, you put them in the corner. Yes. You, 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 um, you explain them. everything. Yes. You, you show it in black and white. Right. And even then, they just turn around. You know what? It sounds good, but you know, I think about it. Other words. No, no. That's fine. That's no, 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 that's fine. What I'm saying to you, John, is that's fine, but uh, at least you like, look. I said to you there are two sentences. The two sentences we need to believe in to enter paradise. It's like a contract. This God has made a contract. And if you say these two sentences and believe in them and accept them, then you're going to go to paradise. Do you want to go to heaven? Look, heaven's a beautiful place, John. It's got beautiful women in it. It's got rivers and milk and honey and wine. Palaces to live in, where the bricks are made of gold and silver. The water is made of is musk. So you want to live there? But you want to go to paradise? You already believe in God, John. Why don't you accept Muhammad as a messenger of God into paradise? You want to go to paradise? Have your parents passed away, John? No. Have, your grandparents passed away, John? No. Okay, would you like to see them again, John? John would. So John, why don't you go to paradise and see your parents again? Or do you never want to see them again? Yeah, he doesn't want to see them. Okay, so in that case, I should say the words. Now repeat after me. <laughs> okay. Say it different. Yeah. Stop there. Stop there, Shana. Is that okay? Oh, John can think about it. But he say the first sentence, John. Yeah? Because this is important, John. Look, you might not say, think, saying, look, come back one moment. You might not think, because there's uh, time. You might not think these two sentences are important, John. But God in the Quran thinks it important. You know why? Otherwise, you perception. No, no, it's not. John, John, one second, John. 
you've agreed there's a God. You, but you already believe it from the beginning. You agreed that he alone should be worshipped, which you've already, you've already believed in. You've agreed the Quran is the words of God, which probably you've already believed in. Right? If, right? So it's not my perception, it's what the Quran says. You've agreed the Quran is from God. If you agree the Quran is from God, and this is what the Quran is saying, then it's not. Um, it's got to be right. Make sense? So you think about it, John, but you're very, very close to Islam. Oh, look, the point is, John, you're 99% there to Islam. You know the religion. See, John says that if he was to speak to a Jew or a Christian, they yes. would give him very, very similar. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. Because look, I, I, I'm, I'm deliberately making it difficult for him. That's right. No problem. Because no. I've, I've been in this situation. No problem. That's the whole idea. The person will admit everything and then deny everything. And I'm deliberately yes. making it difficult for him. No problem at all. John, Christianity said that Jesus who walked on the earth is God. Do you believe in that? That's what. Uh, sorry, say that again. Christianity said that Jesus is God. God incarnate. Can you believe in that? John, you know, like John said before, you know, he believes in God, but he doesn't know the, he, the specifics. No, no, but can you accept that a man walking on the earth, eating food, we've agreed about the attributes of God, we've agreed that God is like this, Jesus clearly wasn't like this, he was a man. Could you, is it possible that God, Jesus could be God? It doesn't make sense, no. Okay, so we reject Christianity. Can you believe that religion is only for the Jewish people? That doesn't make sense. Either. So we reject that. So what's that? The only Islam in John? Do you want to do something to each other? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? I don't know what he's saying. Do you read? Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum. Inna alhamdulillah, ahmadahu wa nasta'inahu wa nasta'afiruhu. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasuli al-kareem. Amma ba'd. Right. Um, now, inshallah, I should be expert in giving dawah to Christians and all the other non-Muslims, apart from atheists, which I think you've actually got the sheets for atheists as well, now, inshallah. So the thing is, it's about practice. So I would suggest after this training, you go and practice in your own time and be conversant with it and provide a framework where you can give dawah, inshallah. Okay, and then you can tweak it and change it as convenient for yourselves. Inshallah. Just a couple of things um, we didn't cover slide. I just wanted to go through is that Jesus was a Muslim according to the Bible because he prayed on his forehead to one God, Matthew. He submitted to the will of God in Luke. He greeted his disciples with the greeting of peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. Jesus had a beard as is the way of all the prophets. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Just some evidence for you, Inshallah. So we've been through this already, Inshallah. Judaism, we don't have time specifically. Okay, Jehovah's Witnesses, we have covered, I think, how to answer them, inshallah. If not, it's all in your manual, which will be emailed. Already sent. Already sent. Already sent, alhamdulillah. You've already received them, and you should be expert soon, inshallah. Uh, all the questions. If there are any specific ones, we'll cover them. Otherwise, inshallah, we'll conclude. These are some of the ones that uh, I've put on here. Uh, aren't women oppressed in Islam? The Sheikh's going to come on in a few minutes and give a talk. Inshallah, you can ask him. Or I can address them here, whatever you wish. Shia or Sunni, which one is the correct one? This comes up now because of Iraq. It comes up quite regularly. Sunni comes up, what I would suggest is one of the things, my brother asked me the same question just now about Shia Sunni. He's got somebody Shia at work, how can you give dawah? And uh, about you have to have an Imam and so on. I said, Look, I, I would do, I would give a little story with Imam Abu Hanifa. I played with him. He agreed to have a debate with the Shias apparently, and he went to their Imam Bahas or mosque or whatever it is, their place. And when he went there, he picked up the shoes and said, I'm only using the shoes here because I've heard the Shias used to steal the shoes at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the Shia scholars, whatever they were, they got very angry and they said, that's a ridiculous thing to say, that you're accusing Shias of stealing. They said, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi how could they steal the shoes? Because Shias came much later. So Imam Walimha said, well, that answers the question, there's no debate. So, um, I hope that answers the question. Didn't the Prophet doesn't play the way? We know that he didn't because of the Quran's miracle that we've said. Why do women inherit less than men? Why do men inherit more than women? Um, anything specific we'll cover, otherwise we'll continue because otherwise it's going to take time. 
if any of these you want specifically answered, or any other question, inshallah. Okay. Uh, this has come up. The Quran says that men are allowed to hate women. Okay, and I'm sure you've uh, heard the correct answer. If not, we can answer it. Why are two women witnesses equal to one man? Why is apostasy punishable by death? This does come up. Okay. Someone who leaves Islam, why is it punishable by death? Uh, any of these you want to answer specifically, I will do. Otherwise, we will conclude, inshallah. Anybody wants me to answer any of these? Uh, the answers are not in the manual, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, but it's just volume number two, inshallah. Um, you can email me questions. My email address is somewhere. You can email me questions, I'll answer. I'll try and answer them, inshallah. Um, any specific questions sister wants to ask or brother wants to ask, I'll answer it, inshallah. Out of all of these. What is apostasy? Apostasy means to. I don't know what that means. After believing in Islam, going back to. Yeah, that's right. After believing in Islam, to go back to disbelieve is apostasy. Into that. Into okay. Mm -hmm. So it's apostasy is that. Why is it punishable by death? Are you happy with you to give an answer there? Somebody asks you? Yes. Okay, they may ask you about Sharia. Let's just keep it simple. Okay, let's keep it basic. Sharia. They say, well, you believe in the Sharia. You want this and that. But hang on a minute. You say to the Christians, you want, your prayer says you want the Sharia. And the Christian will say, no, we don't. He say, how do you pray every day? I'll give you one example. This really covers all of these things, really. The Christian prays every day by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So you ask the Christian, how are you praying every day? If you know this. And they'll say that we pray by asking for God's kingdom to come on the earth. We'll say that really you're praying for the Sharia. Because God is already the king of the universe, he's the king of heaven, but you're saying, God, like you are the king in the heaven, we want you to be king on the earth. That's what they pray every day. So really, Jesus taught the people to pray for the Sharia, to be, so that God's laws could be on the earth. So they pray for the Sharia every day. Does that make sense? Yeah? Because they say, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So God, and if you say to them, they say, no, 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 what we mean is God should be the king, but God is already the king. On, it says you are asking for God to be the king on the earth. So how can you be king on the earth? King on the earth means that God's laws should be on the earth, which is the Sharia, of course. Okay. That hopefully that answers the question, inshallah. Anything else specific? Because some of the... Uh, where the information comes from, inshallah? That's conclusion, inshallah. Uh, if brothers have got sisters have got any other questions, I'll ask them, inshallah, otherwise we'll conclude. One of the things I will say is that, inshallah, email uh, brothers uh, forwarded the material to you. The other thing is that, uh, for the brothers, uh, obviously this is kind of dawah in the open, like we do in the dawah table, but our dawah table is in Kilburn, inshallah, alhamdulillah, on Saturdays around midday to 6 o'clock. So if you're free, come along and get... Uh, uh, some practical experience, inshallah, of those giving da'wah there and some witnessing people accepting the shahada, inshallah. So if you're free any Saturday, for whatever time, whether it's half an hour, an hour, two hours, whatever, it's Kilburn Park Tube Station, come there to Kilburn, and then you can see the da'wah going on there, inshallah. And I think that's something that's done, inshallah. Uh, can I just see one? the reference page, the page before that? That's where I've taken some of the information from. I'm going to produce this into a booklet as well. Uh, probably that way is simple or something. It's all of this information. So at the moment it's in the manual. It's a 22, 23 page manual which will be emailed to you. We'll print it out inshallah. And then it will inshallah be into a book form with all these dialogues etc. But uh, the most important thing is practicing. The idea of these, sorry, you haven't gone on to level 2. Okay. But you take the level 2 sheets from here. In level 2 you pick the questions and you pick the answers yourselves. Take the sheets from here, inshallah, and practice. The whole idea is to practice. If you practice with a friend at home, okay, with a brother, sister, whatever, you practice, inshallah, then you get the idea. If you practice a few times, then you'll know the answers, then when you give da'wah, you can give, you can follow that through, inshallah. At least it provides some sort of framework, and then you can sort of modify. It's, it's only one particular style. You modify as is comfortable for yourselves. I'm not saying this is the only way, or this is the best way. This is sort of my way that I follow, and the brothers follow. So you change as you want, inshallah. Any other brothers and sisters? We'll continue to like Okay, Jazakallah for listening. And please make dua for the brothers. Make dua for us. That's what we need. We need your dua desperately. Uh, because that's what we depend on. 
سپید می دوام کرد. جزاک الله خیر. سبحان الله مولا دیدی که آشکان دار ایلا ایلا نیاز داری. تو بله. جزاک الله خیر. السلام علیکم. I'll get the chef to... I'll get the girl to introduce you.